which is good and bad, right? They can get in calibration and watch out without feedback, they can get out of calibration. So now, if they understand to really fine tune it, then I got them. Yeah. And then he would hit some with work without it Yeah. It just sort of go off the field. Yeah. So again, what the guys do is they'll go in the hotel room and practice. Right? They go to the practice putting green and they get calibrated. They go out and play a practice round, they get calibrated. They come back from the practice round, go to putting green again, they get calibrated. And they may go back to the hotel room and get calibrated again. So Oh yeah. It's fifteen minutes, half an hour, whatever it is. That's not a it doesn't take a long time. Yeah. I mean, you know, at first you're trying to get get your numbers get correct, but then if you do it on somewhat of a consistent basis every other day, you're not going to get too very far off, which is nice about it. And now I'm able to control whether I have a 20 footer or 40 footer. I'm being able to control that based in my mind of the time and the distance is all I'm really having to care about. So before I was always having, okay, I'm gonna hit 60 footers. I got to practice, you know, 40 of them in a day to get this. Now it's in my brain and in my feeling here in the thorax to be able to control that, based upon the length of the stroke and the timing and then the energy that you produce it. So it becomes very simple. So now he has a scale, right? It doesn't matter where he's playing. Here's the scale that I need. So now it's just one variable, and that's length, because the rubber band spring is going to be the same because he's calibrated that. So all I do is take it back a little further, and there's where the ball goes. Yep. That's based on the texture of the grain. Right? So that's the that's the friction, right? Okay, right. friction. Right. Yeah. So whatever that coefficient of friction. So for here it's whatever, and I need a I need a speed from that putter. That's where it's calibrated. It's call it for this one. It's two four, two five, two six, somewhere in that range, right? So now it doesn't matter on that speed. That's going to get the ball to here. But now I want to make sure that the length to speed ratio never changes. changes. Okay. And the ratio of backswing time and forward swing time never changes. Well, I go on to a faster green. Uh, so. I, I may come down to five, five and a half. Do that. Uh, but the ratio. With, the ratio so always stays the same. Yeah, the ratio stays the same. That's the time of the backstroke's the same, whether it's a, 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 a five footer like this or if it's a 50 footer. The time of the stroke is always the same. That's constant. The length of the stroke will, will change, correct. And the amount of energy then that you need to create for the length of the putt based upon the speed of the green obviously is the determining factor. And as, as players, they figured it out, right? They've known this, but now... Well, yeah, this we, confirms it. And it also gets them tighter. So, and it doesn't matter if it's, if it's a putt or a chip or a pitch or a driver. It's the same story, right? So now we just say, okay, well, what is Tom's data? What is his ratios? Can we repeat it? So over a year's time, he's not going to build this balance. Well, it's got to be pretty close to 2.6, right? The work that they've done on my setup and get me in neutral posture has really helped because I really feel that the stabilization that I have throughout the stroke and really the only thing that's moving is this here that's controlling the entire stroke. So I can feel that I can get in neutral posture here. And then this right here controls the stroke. I'm not worrying if nothing else is moving. So when the ball's there, I don't have to worry about my head staying still or my hips staying still anymore. That's going to happen because I've got myself in the right posture. Now the thorax takes it back and through. My body just feels like it's solid as a rock. Thor your thorax, I guess, would be from a biological yeah, standpoint. Yeah, it's really off the spine. But it's off the back, but it's, it's easier to feel here. Yeah. this is the main key right here for me so now again with the elite athletes you know within a hundredth of a second they're not changing right pretty amazing what the body can do now us as, as amateur golfers or maybe 
professional golfers are not at the highest level, we may be 12, 15, 20 hundredths of a second off. Can we go from 20 to maybe 10? Great. Now what happens with my distance control, my precision gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And as I start moving to this level, hey, I can get one, two, three hundredths of a second. Watch out. No, that's the goal, right? Yeah, you're, again, you're going to make more putts. I mean, that's right. You, know, you start making 15 and 20 footers because the feel is so much more easier to control the distance based upon something here instead of worrying about you know all this other stuff i mean it's all controlled and and when you're practicing the numbers are giving you feedback every time so it's so much easier to learn so much faster from a feel aspect now we can put a metric to a feel right yeah it's no different than you take a seven iron you know you hit it 150 yards it's pretty easy, so that's not ideal. But all of a sudden, what do you do when you have 155 yards? Well, then you have some feel. So if you practiced enough, you'd learn how to hit your six iron 155 yards or a hard seven iron. I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to narrow the focus as much as we can, but he's doing it with science. Here we go. <laughs> That's why he's on tour. Right? So again, you can get a good one like that. You can mark it as your best. That's kind of your your line that you want to repeat. Great. Um, Not bad. So then we can change it. We can now that we have that data, we can now watch it offline. So he can go play around a golf, not even connected to the app. And I can play around a golf. What's my data look like? I can download it. I can send it out to the cloud and say, okay, Rob, let's take, go take a look at that data. Let's see what we got. So online mode is one mode. Offline mode is another. And the third is with the video camera. So I can have video 2D. And yeah, yeah. So it's real you don't even feel it. It's a, it weighs 7.6 grams. So it's really, really light. Same sensor goes driver, putter, whatever it is. Questions? Huh? Backstroke seconds. Kind of yeah, so this ratio still applies. Yeah, you go to the other the and you start so with like the yeah, energy so time with, stays the new, same. with the new ratio. And, uh, and uh, the if you want to say the rate the stays the same. But right, so the rate that's time the first thing that you want to do is you so need to understand So then I want to get it softer or harder, I just stretch the rubber band, or I make the length a, a little bit longer. Four right? footer or if it's a 40. move it back a little further, so now I get the same. Yeah. 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 And that's the biggest yes. problem that we see so, with the amateur golfers is they change time, they change rate, and they change distance. So other than that, they do a pretty good job. <laughs> and they go, I want to be consistent. It's like, well, I got three balls that I'm moving all around. So I can try to hit like I'm going to hit a putt 60 feet. It'll go down there, but my backstroke, the time should be the same in, in the .6 range. Even if I'm hitting a 20-footer, this backstroke gets a little longer, a little quicker. It should be somewhere in the same range. There you go. So when you can develop that first and foremost, is that correct, Mike, is the backstroke length and in your mind that whether you have a 4-footer or a 20-footer or a 60-footer, but the, the time of the backstroke is 0.6 seconds. That is, that's your first gauge, and I think you're on the right track. Yes. And then with the new, new ratio that you have on the, on the new part of the app that's going to be a download, is based upon the length of the stroke, how long is the backstroke, and how much impact speed is needed to be able to create a 2.5 or 2.6, whatever the ratio is. So you can really, like if this is all pretty new, this ratio, but in terms of working, I'm going to work on six footers 20 footers and, and 40 footers and those are my bases so if i can work on those then i'll have a constant number for this that'll be a constant number to create the ratio so i'll have places to practice from 6 20 and 40 let's say now you so, notice we didn't talk about path we didn't talk about angle attack but it's all happening we measure it all so but you'll see what do we do here this rotation change from where he set it up versus impact within a tenth of a degree we didn't even talk about it all we talked about is get the timing the same, get the rate the same of length to speed. And it starts, as we tighten up that variance, everything else starts to happen. I mean, for a for basic 30 or 40 footer, a tenth of a degree, tenth of a degree you can't do it. It's not going to go offline. So there is a way to measure based on the lines. 
they, yeah. ha they have it in there. Yeah, so we got everything. So again, we call that zeroing out. So if I get my athletes to zero it out, I'm going to have success. You know, on a 40-footer, because it's based upon the target line, the putter's going to go slightly to the inside, so these numbers will get bigger as the putt gets longer. If you get back to this three-footer, they might be 3.0 degrees or something. But but the key is, is obviously, there's not a wrong or right answer here, but zeroing it out is most important. most important thing in putting in terms of starting the ball in line is face angle squared impact. Yeah, that's, that's a large per start, right? So now... But through the setup... Yeah through working on the speed and in, in, in terms of your tempo and the, and the, and the ratios, yeah. that's going to get better for one. And then two, if you have too much rotation or you feel that there's too much time, I mean, obviously you have numbers there to work on it. Right. So if I wanted to, okay, I, I want a little less rotation, I can do the same thing and just be aware a little bit through the thorax and controlling the face angle. And these should get slightly smaller. But obviously, it wasn't quite as good and a little close. Yeah. But I was trying to manipulate, if you will. And that's what. But you can do that in practice, yeah. but you never want to do it on the course. And it throws it out of frequency. So, again, I, this is what we used to do as coaches, and we start working on face angles, right? And not knowing that we're throwing all the other frequencies off. Because okay. we as coaches would go face angle, face angle, face angle. Like, no, that's on the end of the tail. I want to go to the head and go, let's fix the problem and watch what happens to the effect. So through the setup, my numbers have gotten better working on the setup and working on the on the on the speed of the backstroke first and foremost. Yep. Yes. Yeah, like I can practice on the putting green and get these numbers and get this data and get all this. See, there's the rate of change. Then I can say, okay, I'm going to go play nine holes in the practice round. And what I do is. Once I get on the golf course, I chart what length of putts that I had and what my, my breaks were. And then I have those charted. And then I get back and get on my computer and look back or my phone and say, you know, maybe you do better on all the right to lefters were good, but on your left to righters, <laughs> something wasn't right. So, you know, it gives you the feedback because it's always not the same on the driving range or the putting green as it is on the golf course. It's great about this. Use it on your own club. You can use it on the golf course. The data still gets back to you. Too quick or too, uh, I mean, if you're I mean, not this, well. I mean, to me, most importantly is going back to, to this is a, if this is pretty good, I know my, my, my pace is going to be pretty good more than likely. And obviously, more than anything, putting becomes somewhat psychological. But the thing is, is you don't ever want to be able to go out and putt and be controlling the face. So I will go back and I'll work more a little bit on my setup make sure that I'm definitely in the neutral posture, my arms are hanging, uh, check my alignments through the feet, through the knees, the butt of the club, up through my shoulders, and then just concentrate on the thorax. And just continue to work on something that basic and that simple and try to get those numbers pretty good. Because the worst thing in putting to me is it can be almost like you miss left, you miss left, the next one you're going to miss right, then you're going to miss left. I mean, it's, it's a never-ending cycle that you can't control, and that becomes trying to control the face. So you have to become a good putter. You have to have a shorter memory and understand and realize in your basis is the structure that you set up in, neutral posture, and trust that, and controlling it with the thorax to get your numbers in terms of timing correct. And by practicing, when these are good, the numbers in the face angles get better. You just have to trust them. Don't panic, in other words. You start panicking, you, you're controlling face, missing left, missing left. Now you miss right, then you miss. You're never going to do anything. So, you know, we all before used to always try to make perfect strokes and, like I said, control, worry about face angle. But then you're trying to control face angle. You can't make putts. It's impossible. So for me to get back to just structure and set for one and then worry about some of the timing issues, controlling it with a thorax. Pretty good. Yeah. Good left, guys, 
worked with James Seekman on putting for and chipping for 20 years. And probably 18 years ago, I always struggled with setup. My shoulders used to get open, right shoulder to get too low to set square, and I just said, I'm tired of having to worry about it. He said, we'll try left hand low. So I went to left hand low immediately, and I just grabbed the putter on 10 fingers, but all of a sudden my shoulders were level, I had no forearm issues, and in 18 years I haven't worried about my setups, other than they've worked on me in terms of structurally a little bit, but I haven't worried any issues with, you know, open shoulders or right shoulder too low, so... guys that use it a lot know it's so it's excuse me it's very intelligent it knows when to go to sleep and I'm when to wake up ball. so and it when depends I'm on done, the orientation of it game. so if you turn it upside down it goes into deep coma sleep if you turn it right side up like it's ball. on a putter it starts to wake up a little bit quiet eye movement sees a light eagle okay now i need to wake up another lot. level start so to see I emotion there, wake up another level thorax, now i'm ready to capture emotion the thorax take it on so you put it in the bag yes exactly i can see the spot right there when i'm done and it's great to have it with your students. You just connect it. So, okay, this is little Johnny's session. Disconnect from the app. Go play, little Johnny. Just He's let great, him go play. He? And he gets done. You bring it back in. Connect the uh -huh. data. Now I got it. So I can see his session. This is what he did. He's and a I busy go up guy. To the cloud. So all the data goes from the app up into the cloud. So and I can again, track him. So I can do a remote function, too. Initially, for sure. Nice. And then on the video side, it captures the video in high speed as well as the 3D data Excuse me? and automatically synchronizes. Oh, yeah, that's very good. So if we're in anywhere near that .6 on the backswing time, then we're in good shape. Trying to get him over to the ball. Yeah. They're finding out. When I find out, the, the main thing is the structure and how you can have your back straight up in the line here and not bend over. I mean, a lot before everybody thought that you had to have your head all the way down, but then you're getting yourself out of neutral posture. So when that's happening, then you're always trying to get back to where your neutral posture is. That's just instinctive. So you know, once you're in the neutral posture, your eyes are set up here, and then you just look your eyes to the ball. So they're still going to be basically over the ball, if you see. I always practice with a string from above, so I know my eyes are above the ball with my line. So if, if I'm out of if I'm doing any practicing, I'm using the line, then I, I have a pencil with string above, and I go through, we've gone a measuring process of basically eight and a half inches to set the feet, and I go into my neutral posture, and then I can find where my head right over the ball, my eyes over the ball. I mean, some people have it in, some probably more people have it inside or not too many outside. But you use the line on the ball when you play too? I do. I line on my putter as well, so. Do you, have you ever made a bar cut yourself? Uh, I think it needs to be basically, um, you know, Sam Putlap can measure that based upon, you know, what the shaft angle is, so. I don't worry about it too much. Um, I like the face. I guess what I'm getting at is if you go more straight No, there's always an arc. Like, it's five degrees over 4.9, I mean. But the rate of closure, that's the important number. Yeah, I 
I mean, from this distance, you're going to have somewhere in that area. But you'll see a ratio, too, of his length to arc. So we actually measure that, right? So He has a way to measure it, yes. Yeah, so you can look at that. So we know, based on his posture, is he not only the, I want to say the vertical, but also the horizontal, right? So is he truly on plane? Is the face always perpendicular to that plane? So we know that if he gets in his posture, and he gets his timing, his length of speed, he always gets everything else in a line. Yeah. But you have the data if you need it. You can also go to it. Right. Uh, we just have it. Once we get the posture right, we get the timing, which drives the posture. They work together. And I get length of speed with him, and then he's ready to go. That's awesome. Yeah. And again, that's the simplistic data. The more complex data goes up into the cloud. So as a certified coach, you can dive a little bit deeper. So we do timing, length, speed, rotations, and we keep it going deeper. Now here's the new ratio that we're working on is link the backstroke with the amount of force that needs to be applied to the stroke for this distance. It's pretty good there, right? Two five, two six. Yeah, that's speed. 25, 25, right in that range. Okay. Okay. Explain to me what I need. Yeah, so we have workshops online. So you can get all that education every single week. Every so we're looking as a ratio here, somewhere in two and a half for the length of the stroke. The miles per hour that we need to be able to create for this thing to pop. That ratio doesn't change whether it's a four foot or a forty foot. So as the putt gets longer, the stroke gets longer, but it also gets quicker because it's always 0.6 seconds on the backstroke. So you're finding some fixed numbers to establish yourself, and then you're looking at the miles per hour, how much energy I need to put forth to have that ratio based upon the fixed numbers. Pretty interesting. You know, we've done it by instinct our whole life and practicing. Now we have some science back to prove why we've been able to do that. Always trying to get to 0. 0.6 seconds is the model for the length for the time of the backstroke. And then to try to have a 2.5 to 2.6 ratio between these two numbers with the backstroke that's needed for this length of putt and how much energy you need to put forth. So if we were going to chart this is a four foot putt, we're always wanting this no matter how long the putt is, to be 0.6 seconds for a backstroke regardless, whether it's 4 foot or 40 foot. But from 4 feet, the length of the backstroke, 7 inches, 2.8 degrees of energy for me. So some people might have a shorter one with more energy, but it's going to be pretty close because the timing has to be the same. You always want to stay around 0.6 seconds for your backstroke. So, uh, the ratio doesn't change, but if the screen was faster, obviously the backstroke would be smaller, and I'd need less energy to create that. So, you know, that's, 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 a, that's the feel, if you will, of how good you can putt. Some weeks it's going to be faster than the other, so. But the key is, is if I was to hit a 40-foot putt here, Go down there. Same time. So this is what I do indoors, but now I can outdoors with the plastic. Can I get this close to six seconds still for a 20 footer? So that's good. 2.6. That's pretty close in terms of the ratio. So, but I'm controlling it by this in terms of the power. This is the motor that keeps it moving. 
thought? Yeah. Well, I think about it. Okay. Awesome. Give me a call if you have any questions. But that's the key is now I have in my brain and in my body to feel. I, that's how I determine how I pace my putt so I know if I have a 60-foot or if I have a 15-footer. So when I'm, I'm on the green, I'm going to pace to see how far I have. So I have parameters to go by and what my feels are. 